what's going on guys welcome back to this video today we're going to cover the last part of Zeek the open source packet analyzer and intelligence framework and in today's video we're going to discuss the frameworks okay and the packages okay for those who are newcomers to this video kindly review part one and part two of Zeek. Uh, we discussed what is Zeek, how it is used, for what objectives or what goals can be used. And in the second part, we also discussed the scripts and we discussed the signatures. So get back with them to uh, be familiar with Zeek. All right, so today we're going to discuss the frameworks and packages. So much like scripts and signatures, frameworks and packages both are used to do an extension of the Zeek functionality. So they extend the functionality of Zeek. Thing is, the usage is different. For example, uh, let's start with frameworks. So frameworks, can be used in three fashions. The first fashion, we call them from the command line by specifying the path. For example, we can say zeek c r. We give a pickup file, sample pickup. And then, in order to load the framework, we have to call the framework from its uh, path. Say, for example, the framework is located under, usually, the frameworks are located under um, opt all the way till you find frameworks. And then the framework file, for example, hash.zeek. So that's how we can use the frameworks from the command line. Now, what is an example of a framework? An example of a framework is a framework that hashes all the extracted files. Say that the simple the Tabika file here has uh, packets which contain files that have been exchanged between the sender and the receiver. So frameworks, an example of framework is a framework that can extract the files exchanged, or sorry, the hash, extract the hashes of the files exchanged. So if you run this, the output here will be hashes of the files that have been exchanged in the pcaf file. Another method, which is the more common method in using framework, is by loading fr the framework within the script. So loading within scripts. Recall that in the previous video we covered scripts and we mentioned that scripts can be used again to extend the functionalities of the Zeek at the same time to correlate events so inside the script we can use the load keyword at load right and then we can call the framework and here as you can see we have we can call the framework from its path so we use the load keyword to call the framework within the script and then when we want to use the framework simply we call the script from the command line same as when we called the or when we invoked the framework using its dedicated path so you have two options from the command line directly by including the path in the command while analyzing the pickup file or using the scripts inside the script you can use the load keyword and then the path of the framework now what could be another example of a framework so we mentioned that frameworks can be used for example to extract hashes and frameworks can also be used to extract uh, files we can also extract the files that have been exchanged in the pick up file when we use a framework to extract the files there will be a log file generated okay the log file name is files 
dot log. So this file, this log file, has all of the files that have been exchanged in the uh, pcap file or in the packets. Another example of a framework is an intelligence framework. An intelligence framework is used to spot indicators of compromise. For example, say we have a framework at slash opt, slash zeek, slash intel, and we can create one, for example, call it zeek underscore intel dot zeek. This could be a framework that's used to locate indicators of compromise. Now, what can be the content of this framework? Um, usually, intelligence frameworks that are used with Zeek contain um, entries such as, for example, here we can see fields, and here we can see the indicator. These are fields, right? And then under, under that, we can see the field here can be um, the domain name, for example, example, com the indicator here is domain and you can add entries here hashes IP addresses and then when we have the framework ready you can call it again uh, inside a script or using the command line okay now we talked about scripts we're gonna take practical scenario after we finish this part but now let's jump to the packages so Zeek packages. Again, with packages, we aim to extend functionality. Now, packages include plugins and third party scripts. So we can actively install these plugins and third-party scripts to Zeek and use them while analyzing PCAP files or while even doing live analysis of the traffic. For example, we can use ZZKG, that's the command, and install. And then here we use the packet, package URL or the package path you, you could have you could you could download the package to your local machine and then you can use this command to install the package so here you could use either a local path or you could use a git url now if you want to see the installed packages you can run zeek and then list this will list the installed packages. If you want to remove, you just, instead of list, you use remove. You can remove uh, the installed package. All right, what are examples of packages? So example of packages can be, again, they could be the same. You could find a package to extract the hashes, much such as the, uh, the ones found in the frameworks. You could also install a package that can extract, for example, clear text passwords. So doing that, you can extract the clear text passwords exchanged in the live traffic or uh, in the pcap file. Now, how do we use the packages? Okay, suppose that I have installed the package that will extract the clear text passwords. Now, how am I supposed to use these packages? So now we jump to how to use the packages or how to call them. Again, three methods. The first method, we can call the package inside the scripts. So we can load packages from within the scripts, the Zeek scripts. Now, technically, how do we do that? Again, similarly to what we did in frameworks, we can use the at load and here the path to the package. Now, this will be written inside the script file. That's why, guys, if you this is the first time you are attending this video, I advise you to go back to the second part 
and watch the video about the Zeek scripts. Zeek scripts are very important when you want to use frameworks and the packages. Okay, now if you don't want to use the scripts, there is another method. The other method is to, again, much like frameworks, we can call them from the command line. Say Zeek dash C R, and we have a pickup file such as hey HTTP dot pickup. Then we specify the path to the package. Okay, and the other method is to call the package name. Now here, remember that when we install the package, we use this command. Here we can call the package name from the command line, zeek cr pcap, and then we can call the package name. For example, a package to extract a clear text password can have a name such as zeek sniff pass. Now, this is how we use the packages and frameworks. All right, guys, now let's go to, okay, so we have the exercise files and we're going to solve task eight and task nine and close this room. So task eight for the Zeek um, frameworks. So investigate the case one pickup file with intelligence demo Zeek. So let's go to task eight files and we have Let's take a look. We have um, one, um, looks like it's a package. No, not package. It is a framework, hash. So we have three uh, frameworks. Now you might be asking me, or might be wondering. Okay, so scripts have the extension Zeek, and frameworks have the extension Zeek. So how are we gonna uh, differentiate between packages and, sorry, between frameworks and between as scripts simply you're going to take a look at the contents so we open the file and here we can see that there is the load keyword used and there is a path okay so this is a script to call the framework so load file extra load file extract framework so remember guys we told you that in order to use the frameworks you can use the at load keyword followed by the framework name inside the script. Similarly, guys, we can take a look at the hash file here and we see the contents. Same here, we can see it is calling the framework using the load keyword. So these are our scripts. The intelligence. All right, so here the intelligence, again, is loading the framework and reading a text file Okay, the text file here is a feed. So let's see how this works. As you can see, guys, we use the load keyword two times to load the framework, and then we use the text file. Why? Because this is an intelligence framework. An intelligence framework needs a feed file. You remember that intelligence frameworks are used to locate indicators of compromise. So we need a list of the suspicious indicators of compromise so that the framework can use them to look into the PCAF, uh, the traffics or the packets, exchange the PCAF file. So the, the feed here is this file. This file here contains the um, domains, IPs, the IOCs that you want to look for in the PCAF file. Okay, so now we know what we have. Let's go back to the question. Investigate the case on PCAF file with intelligence demo Zeek script. Investigate the Intel log file. Look at the second finding. Where was the Intel info found? So we're going to analyze this PCAF file with the intelligence script. The intelligence script, remember that it is calling an intelligence framework that has a text file which represents the feed. So we're going to look for, take a look first. Um, let's make the speaker. Zoom in one more time. Okay. So CD desktop exercise and CD task. Okay, obviously we have to use case sensitivity and then we're going to take a look at intelligence so let's take a look at the feed file here okay let's copy that okay this is the feed 
file that the intelligence framework will use as you can see it has these fields the first field is the domain name the type the indicator type and the meta source so basically guys this feed file will be used by the framework to look if the uh, packet capture okay contains this domain we're looking for this domain in the packets in order to do that we're going to use zeek dash c dash r case one and then we're going to call the scripts from the command line okay okay now remember guys when we use scripts with zeek there will be log files generated we're going to use ls and see what do we have so we have these log files extracted as per the protocol and we have this one intel.log this is the log file that will be generated if the intelligence framework that you use uh, found a match okay so this means that we have a packet in the pika file that contained the domain name we were looking after so let's cat intel log and see here so we have these fields the UID, the source IP, the source port, destination IP, destination port, the scene indicator, the type of the indicator, where it was seen. Okay, so what do you want from here? We want to look at the second finding. So we have two findings, obviously, here. We can differentiate them using the IP address. The first IP address here represents the source IP address of the first finding, and this represents the source IP address of the second finding. So in the second finding, we found that um, the packet contained the domain name we were looking after. And as you can see, it was found in the host header of the packet. So this is the answer of the question. It was found in the host header. Investigate the log file, the HTTP log file. What is the name of the downloaded executable file? So when we analyze the capture there was a log file extracted under the name http it means they were http packets exchanged and and now zeke has analyzed them so cat http.log take a look first so we have many packets we want to extract an executable file so suppose we were looking for an executable file we want to extract it from here so remember guys when we want to extract data from log files generated by zeke we will want to use the fields so let's take a look at the fields so we have here um, UID the source IP source port destination IP destination port and you have URL but we don't have uh, an explicit field that indicates of that a file has been exchanged so usually when a file is exchanged or downloaded or uploaded in HTTP packets, it will be seen in the URL. So we're going to extract the URL field from here. Get log zeek cat URI. So now we have the URLs and we can locate an executable file, which marks the answer for this question. Investigate the case one pcap with the hash demo script. Investigate the files log. What is the md5 hash of the downloaded file? So first, let's take a look at this script. So this script is calling a framework. And this is the path of the framework. You want to take a look at what the framework does. You can just take a look at the contents. So this framework, this is an example framework that generates hashes for the files. MD5 and SHA1. Now, what files? The files that have been exchanged in the packet capture. Okay, fine. So now we know what we're go what we're doing. So we're going to call the script here using z dash c dash r case one dot pcap, and then we call the script by using its name hash demo. Okay, so how do we do what we what we have done? Now we're gonna list 
the contents and we have to see if we have additional log files generated so we have this file extract no not this one let's see here yeah files log so the files log remember guys the files log will be generated whenever you use any framework that will uh, process files whether the framework extracts the hashes or even extracts the files themselves there will be a fi log file called files let's take a look at the files log okay let's take a look at the fields as we used to do so we have the uid the hosts txrx host the connection uid the source depth analyzer file name the duration of the connection and look we have these fields nd5 sha1 sh256 so clearly we use a framework that will or that extracts the hashes of the files exchanged so the question here is investigate the files log what is the nd5 hash of the exe file so you want to locate an exe file guys and extract its hash so let's do this using the file name and the md5 hash so cat files.log the cut file name and md5 here we can extract the file name along its md5 hash but we haven't there are no values for the, the file name so only hashes now how do we know which file we want okay let's see other fields extracted extracted size okay this one could help us we're looking for an executable file so we're gonna use this field meme type gonna copy this and use the same command instead of file name if you were going to use the meme type okay so now we see the type of every file exit chain along with its hash we're looking for the hash for an executable file and clearly this is what we're looking for this is a meme type for an executable file and this is the corresponding md5 hash investigate the case one pcap with the file extract demo script investigate the extract files folder review the contents of the text file what is written in the file okay so let's take a look at the other script file extract so this script clearly calls another framework using the at load keyword. Now let's take a look at the framework and see what it does. Clearly the framework extract the files, but it's good practice to take a look at the contents of the framework before you use it, especially if you are not the one who has created the framework. So load paste files extract. And here, as you can see, this framework is clearly used to extract the files. So now we will call this framework from the command line zeek-c-r case one okay and then the framework so file extract okay so we will have a new folder generated here as you can see, a folder named or directory name extract files. This directory contains or is supposed to contain the files extracted. So cd to extracted files. And then we have these files. Look at the file names. The file names clearly follow a specific formula. The word extract, this looks like a timestamp, and the protocol from which the file was extracted and this is the looks like this is the uid or the connection id of the file okay what do you want from me we want to review the contents of the text file which file is the text file we can use the file command here and use the asterisk because we want to uh, you know take a look at the file type of everything we have in the current working directory and use an l and see here we have the file type of every single entry the first one is ascii text other one is composer document file 2 and the last one here is a portable executable we want to find the contents of the text file so we clearly want to take a look at the contents of this file
and see here indeed guys it has this microsoft ncsi that's the contents of this file now let's jump to frameworks uh, to packages looks like we're gonna have to cd out of here clear cd task 9 so we have two directories let's go over the questions investigate the hey http pika file with the zeek sniff pass module so zeek sniff pass here we mentioned this at the beginning of the video and we said that this is a package that has been uninstalled investigate the notice log which username has more module hits the notice log is a log file that will be generated if the package that you used on the pika file generated a hit okay or it found matches now let's take a look or let's go to clear text pass and investigate the pcap file so clearly here we, ha we want to call the package so zeek dash c r and the pcap file and then we have to locate the package so where is this package located usually the package are installed under opt zeek share zeek site and let's see here zeek sniff pass okay so it's under this directory how do we know? It's the default directory for user-generated scripts and packages. Okay, let's see now. LS. And we have logs generated. Means that the package here has found or has hit some matches. So we have files, we have connection, HTTP, log, notice log. So we're going to take a look at the notice log. Okay, in the notice log, we can see that the contents of the notice log should be or should contain the hits. Okay, so here the package will look for clear text passwords. If the package has found clear text passwords in the PK file we're analyzing, it's going to generate the notice log, which will contain these clear text passwords, assumingly. So here, let's take a look at the fields, UID, source IP, source destination, so, uh, source port, destination IP, destination port, file meme type, the file description, the note, the message. Okay, so it looks like we're gonna take a look at the note here. So password found for user Prozik, password found for user Prozik. As you can see guys, we have notices that a password has been spotted for the user bro Zeek. That is the username which whose password was found. Investigate the case to PCAP with a Geo IP connection module. This, this is uh, another package for generating the geo location data about the IP addresses found in the uh, PCAP file. So go to investigate the case to PCAP with this and take a look at the connection file what is the name of the identified city okay so zeek dash cr and then we have the case one or case two was it case two case two okay and we have now to mention the or include the directory the path geo What's the name of the, it is UIP con. LS, we can take a look at the notice log. Do we have notice log? We have connection log. Take a look at the connection log. We have to look, identify the located city here. As you can see in all the entries, the city located is or spotted is Chicago. Now, how was how was this possible? Remember that this package analyzes the IP addresses and extracts the geolocation. We want to find the geolocation of every IP address and along with the city. So we have them here. Which IP address is associated with the identified city? So Chicago. was associated let's go to the first one so this is the first match 
and we can see that with every entry that's the IP address identified for the city investigate the case to pcap with some stats countable Zeek script how many types of status codes are there in the given traffic capture so we have a script here named some stats countable let's take a look at this so this script is a long one that looks like statistical it extracts static statistical information about the status codes of the packets okay now let's call this script Zeek some stats see so now the information has been uh, you know printed out into the council and we want to find out how many types of status codes are there so I have status codes 302 404 3012 that makes four status codes and this one has we see this before here so we have four status codes so guys that was the end of this room here we have another room Zeek exercises probably we're gonna take a look at this but later on of course to cover more um, you know network analysis and threat intelligence with Zeek